does your comment look smudgy, but you're after something more like this? Apologies for saying in my last video that the method I showed you on how to stack a comment in serial would also work for smart telescope data such as C-STARS. I didn't take into account the aggressive dithering that C-STAR does. So after you do star removal in serial, when StarNet actually removes the registration data from that sequence. So when you do a comet alignment, the comet isn't where you're expecting it to be. So in this video, I'll show you how you can copy the registration data from the pre-StarNet sequence to the StarNet sequence. It adds about another two or three manual steps in between the process that I showed you in the last video. But in this video, I'll show you the whole thing so that you don't have to keep going back and forth between the two videos. Huge thanks to my Patreon patron, Bernard, who sent me his C-Star data to play with because I didn't get a chance to take pictures of my own. Bernard was also able to clean up the image afterwards and make it look a lot nicer than I did. Great job, Bernard. Thank you for the files. And please check out his website. His link is in the description below. He has some amazing photos on his site. Let's get to the demo. So I'll go through all the steps again here just so that there's completeness in this video. You don't have to keep flipping back and forth, but I do recommend watching the other video as well as I talk a little bit more about why I do things. So I already have my home directory set to where my lights folders are from Bernard. These are 188 20 second exposures. Great. And I'm just going to click on scripts, Python scripts, pre-processing and astronomy smart telescope PP. I'm going to keep everything as is. I'm just not going to do anything. There are no calibration frames. I am not going to clean up files because remember we are going to need it. And this time we actually do need the registered frames. I'm going to click on background extraction and then I'll click on run and there's nothing more left to do here. So let this run. That finished, that took just a couple of minutes and this is what the output looks like. But just like the last video where we ignored this file, we're going to do the same thing. So before we go into the sequences tab, we're going to switch our home directory to the process directory because that's where our sequences are. Click on search sequence and we have all of these. So we have the BKG lights in the previous video. You could have used either the RBKG lights or the BKG lights. They would have given you the same thing. But here we're going to switch to the RBKG lights because it has the applied registration information. So if I click on open frames list, we have the X and Y coordinates that are different for each of these frames, right? We can see the comet looks actually really nice. And we are going to remove the stars from this file. So the registered BKG files, we're going to remove the stars. We're going to go to image processing, star processing, starnet removal. Remember you need starnet in order for this to work. We're going to click on apply to sequence and I'm going to click on execute. So I'm going to let this go for a while because it takes about 10 to 20 seconds per frame. So I'm going to fast forward through this and we will be back after these messages. If you want to support the work that I do, consider checking me out on Patreon and buy me a coffee. It's that bright moon. All right, that completed. And if we look at the frames, we'll see that the comet bounces back and forth, right? It's kind of annoying. So we cannot do a comet stack as is. So we need to copy the registration data into this new Starless R BKG sequence. Before we do that, you need to go to sequence, click on search sequences and click on starless R. We're just basically clicking on the same sequence again. And the reason we do this is because it serial will then, will then generate a little bit more metadata in the sequence file that we'll need to will need in order to make edits to it. So I'm going to open up my directory here. I'm going to go to my process directory and I'm going to type in dot seq in the search bar. And then I have this one has my registration information and this is the new non-registered sequence. And I'm going to open both of these. So I'm going to open this one first. Or you can open it in whatever editor you want. I'm opening it in Notepad++. There we go. And I'm also going to open this one, Starless, in Notepad++. So going back to the R BKG underscore, this has the registration information. I'm going to scroll down until I see something that starts with R. So we have these that start with MO or M0. There we go, R. So we're going to copy anything that says R1. This is the registration information. Do not get to M1. We're going to copy this. So I'm doing control C here. You can right click and copy. We're going to go to our starless sequence here. We're going to scroll down and then we'll see M0 and then we see M1, right? So there's no M or there's no R information. So we're going to just 
make a line here and then paste everything here so we have our R1. So then we have our R1 between M0 and M1, okay? So now we're gonna click Save. I'm gonna minimize this, go back to Cyril. Now I'm gonna click on Search Sequences again and pick Star List, and you'll see that a border appears here. So before I do that, I'm gonna click on Open Frames List. We'll see that X, Y coordinates are all negative one because there's no registration information. Click Search Sequences, click on Star List. Look at that, the border is there. Click on Open Frame List, and now the registration information is here. Woohoo, great. All right, that was, I think, like step two uh, in the new process. So now we need to apply the sequence. We can't just comment tag the side there because you'll see that it didn't actually do anything. So now that we're here, we're gonna go to registration. We're gonna switch this to apply existing registration. Framing method, I would like for it to be current. I'm gonna click on estimate. All right, so it'll give you an output image of 1081 by 1920 or whatever your framing comes out to be. And then you click on go register. And then once this happens, this is pretty quick. We go to the sequence. We have another sequence called R starless underscore blah blah blah. You click on open frames list. You'll see that the frames are cropped. There is no more registration data because it was applied, and the comet actually is staying in the same place while the frame is moving. So now we can go to registration. Click on comet registration. Make sure I'm on the first frame. I'm gonna zoom in. Yeah, the comet got removed in Starnet, but it's okay. I'm gonna do this. Pick object one, go down to the last frame, move this over, comet two. Close this, I'll click on go register. It'll be comet underscore r comet blah blah blah. Okay, so now that's done. If we go to sequence, we have comet underscore r starless. R, BKG, yeah, it gets really confusing. But anyways, now the comet is actually registered. Now we can go to stacking, leave this as this, sigma low, uh, five and, I'm doing five and five for this, for this, you, uh, like I said in the last video, you should play with this, in the last video I did two and five or three and five, I think. I'm doing five and five for this one. It'll use the selected images, 181. I won't even do RGB equalization here. I'll just start stacking. All right, that completed, and look at that. The comet looks so much better than the smudgy comet from before. So super cool. I am going to leave this as is. I'm going to go to my sequences. I'm gonna to go to my star mask thing here. You know, not auto stretch. I'm gonna register with global star alignment. And then I'm gonna click on go register. This should be pretty quick. And then I'm gonna go click on stack, uh, sigma, uh, whatever, sigma low, keep that as that. Uh, I'm gonna do star stack. I should have changed the other name to comet stack, but it's okay. Star stack, it should be pretty quick. There we go, I'm gonna go to auto stretch. There we go, stars look good. Okay, so. All right, the next thing to do is, I already went over this in my last video, so this is gonna, I'm just gonna very quickly go through this. So I'm just gonna pick my star stack here, and then my comet stack. I'm gonna give this a name, comet star, comet star, convert, open this, I'm gonna go to auto stretch, pick this, let's do this. Crop sequence, okay, great, I got that. Um, and then now, all right, now the next step is to recombine the two frames into one one image. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a different workflow than I did in my last video, just to show you that there are multiple ways you, which you could go about. So I'm just gonna go to image processing, star processing, star recomposition. I'll add my two sequences here, or my two frames. And last time I did this, I noticed that, you know, when I was moving the stretch things, it wasn't moving that much. And that's because uh, my friend Deep Rich from Deep Space Astro pointed out that I had auto stretch on here, which I shouldn't have, should have been linear. And then now when I make changes, it does better, but I'm actually not gonna do that, just to show you a different way of doing things. So I combine these, I'm gonna click on apply, apply, close. 
So this is what the auto stretch looks like. I'm going to go to linear and now I'm going to do a generalized hyperbolic stretch. Normally I wouldn't do this because uh, I don't want the stars to blow out, but this is again, just for demo purposes to show you that there are different ways of doing the same processing or processing the same object over and over again. And just like before, I'm not going to make you sit through me going through the slider. So let's fast forward. There you go. I did clip it a little bit, but you can see that the comet tail looks really good. The star streaks are still there. The star net didn't do the best job of removing those stars. And, but I think like overall, like this is a, a good workflow for stacking comet images. You can now do denoising. You can do further background extraction. So if I wanted to, uh, there's no real gradient here that I see, but I can go to tool or scripts, Python scripts, processing, Graxpert, and then really quickly do a background extraction to see what this looks like. There we go. Colors look a little bit better. We can also do a little bit of denoising. I'm going to turn this down to like 0 0.25, uh, 220. Let's do this. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. Yeah, you can do more processing here. Make the background darker, but change the levels, take this into Photoshop or GIMP and start doing stuff on this. But I hope this was useful. Apologies for saying that the last video could be followed using C stars. This one hopefully is a better way to do this. Hopefully this also works with dwarf data. I don't know. I have not imaged the comet with dwarf, but give it a shot and let me know. One troubleshooting step that I'll mention is that if you try to apply the sequence or the apply the registration and you're using the minimum framing, if it doesn't work for you, if you get an error, try maximum framing. That seems to get some people through. I'm not sure what the difference is, why it works sometimes and why it doesn't work sometimes, but maximum framing will work. You just have to crop in a little bit more, especially after you try and create a sequence with the stars only file and the uh, comet only file. And if you test this with the dwarf telescope, let me know. I'm curious to know if it'll work. I haven't tested it myself and I'm kind of afraid to say that it will work even though I think it also did there similarly to what the C star does. And whether you take images with the dwarf, the C star, or any other telescope, and you'd like to share them, consider joining our Discord server. Link is in the description below. We have a growing community of astronomers and astrophotographers, and we'd love to have you. In the future, I'm also thinking about modifying my smart telescope script, or maybe even branching out and creating a brand new one where it has comet stacking. So when we're comet stacking, we don't need the last step, which is stacking because we get rid of it, right? And then we stack our stars only image. So the comet stacking would essentially do everything else except the last step. Maybe it'll also trigger Starnet and copy the registration data. I'm not sure yet. I am probably not going to get to that this month. So the comments that you see will have to be processed manually, but it's in my pipeline. So if you have thoughts on that or feedback about whether or not you like to see it, or if you have any ideas on how it should work, I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. Find me on Discord, on Patreon, on Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you for watching. Happy comet hunting and clear skies.